This is Off the Break Podcast, presented by Silver Screen Insider. And we're back at Off the Break Podcast, your podcast dedicated to current movie theater news, operations, and insights from the people that book the movies. I'm Cody. With me are Kyle and Ken. Hi, everyone. Hi, guys. How was your Thanksgiving? We had an awesome Thanksgiving. Mine was pretty good, too, actually. It was uh, pretty low-key, and luckily yeah. I have family uh, close by here, so safely we were able to have a really pleasant Thanksgiving. Yeah. We uh, we did a little bit of a meal with just the grandparents, so it, that was really nice, and um, oh, the boys really needed to see Grandma, so that was good. Yeah. And, um, and then we decorated all weekend. Fun. I'm not done yet, though. <laughs> De- it can dec- never stop. Christmas decorating at my house is a multi-weekend endeavor. <laughs> Which Ken loves the festivities, I'm sure. He so loves it. It's so much fun. He gets to hang all the things that are up high. <laughs> and lift yep. all the things that are heavy. And, yep. And the things that are also not heavy. It took us three runs to the storage to get all of the Christmas totes. Mm-hmm. There's like over 20. Jeez. <laughs> And I got um, the main like living room, dining room, kitchen area pretty much done. Um, and then I still have to do the the family room, which is downstairs. So mm. I got to do the downstairs family room. That's a big. But we're kind of hung up on that because we got to build this live edge console table so I can have, you know, shelves to put my decorations on yeah so we literally have to build furniture to put our decorations on there <laughs> yeah. are so many we don't we don't currently exist with enough furniture in no. our home enough right. ledges edges tables shelves. window sills shelves yeah so we need to build one build more <laughs> that's 10 feet long it is 10 feet long shelves. that is almost the exact same as what's happening at my place with my girlfriend because while we were shopping for more holiday stuff she goes what if we just had a table yeah. and we could put decorations on it and hang stuff up <laughs> over it. And I'm like, yeah, all right, fine. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll have to be having to make that soon, but yeah. it's fine. Something to do. It'll be good. Yeah. The yeah. abbreviation is DIY for do it yourself. Uh, when you're in a committed relationship, it actually means do it or else. Yeah. <laughs> Emphasis on yourself. Is there going to be help involved with that? Or? There's encouragement. <laughs> I, I would help. really love to see this done <laughs> Hol- holiday sooner, sooner than later. <laughs> I help when we do it, though. Like, I, I she do. does. She picks out several things, and then <laughs> I, I organize, I oversee, and I crack the whip. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I break a sweat doing that. <laughs> Rod, yeah, <laughs> boy, Faster. I'm I'm wiped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, actually, I do. I do help on this stuff, like lift and build, and I uh, helping sand down the wood and I help cut and yeah. Nope, she's a good partner. Speaking yeah. of that, Kyle, I how don't do you ask feel him about to do anything? I wouldn't want to do myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I have to ask him things to do things that I can't do myself, like reach tall places. <laughs> that's where Ken comes in. Because then I, but that's probably part of me just being lazy because i don't want to go get the ladder and go get, <laughs> get it myself i'm like ken up here can you reach that <laughs> can we get into this okay now? yeah sorry of course we can let's we can. do this we can that's enough holiday talk i know but we had a good week it's never enough we did we had some changes we, we had crudes open and the per screen average on that across the board for all of our places was phenomenal i mean and by phenomenal, I mean four-digit gross numbers, which... More than we've seen since February. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this whole news. pandemic. It's Absolutely. been awesome. Yeah. And I joke about it being four digits, but that's big for us right now. So Crudes was great. Phenomenal for everybody. Everybody and, has been super happy with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was actually better than the March releases we had, like, pre-pandemic closures. <laughs> yeah. Like, for the first two weekends of March. So it's awesome. That in awesome. itself's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So Definitely. it's it's amazing. I'm glad we got an animated film finally. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's the first animated that's first come out. Fa- full family. Although I think um, War with Grandpa surprisingly is still playing. It's you still know, seven, around. eight weeks, whatever yep. it is later, yeah. and it's so consistent. I mean, I just I keep holding it because it keeps doing the exact same amount, and 
it's nice to have something that consistent for a matinee. Meanwhile, we see all these R-rated titles. You know, they come, but then they go away really quick. They so do. They die off very quick. But it's a good sign. the family stuff is really held in there, and that's been awesome. Yeah, we've had plenty of horror titles, and they seem to cycle each other out. They do yeah. well the first week, die off the second week, and then there's another one available. <laughs> yeah. Right. There's exactly. always something to fill that art crowd. The yeah. one that's kind of hung around, too, is Honest Thief. We have quite a few spots still. Yeah, it's I think the well. PG-13 rating helped a lot with that. And it's an action movie with Liam Neeson. You just, you know what you're getting. It's not, there's no surprise or twist. You just are a, getting a good action mm-hmm. movie where you kind of know the ending already. And I think people like that. Just like going to have something that they're, you know, they can settle into and enjoy. Yeah, um, he's always a good grocer that just extends the audience. There's nobody on the outside like with right. the, whatever the Snowplow movie was. Last year? Oh, yeah. Oh, what was it? Cold Pursuit? Cold Pursuit. There I can't you go. believe I remember that. That was great. <laughs> but uh, that was R, and it was a dark comedy. And so there was like a lot of people that didn't get it. Right. Yeah. Like that didn't understand what it was, what it was going for. And this is as straightforward as it gets. Yep. And it's the widest net that you can cast right now. Right. For that, for that kind of action. Yeah. Adult action movie. Do you think that type of performance then from... I guess Honest Thief could come in hand with All My Life and Half Brothers, which are like coming tomorrow. We're very um, hopeful, but I'm, there's yeah. not, unfortunately, the romantic comedy with uh, 20 year olds in it doesn't star Liam Neeson <laughs> as, a, <laughs> as a 20 year old with some sort of malady. I think All My Life is kind of sad. And I'm not sure how well that'll play because I think people just want something kind of nice and happy right, right now. They don't want to be even more sad. <laughs> right. I think that's why you see War with Grandpa doing so well, even for yeah. older adults, um, just because it, it's just fun. It's lighthearted. Yeah. Um, and I think that tends to make me think that um, Half Brothers might do a little bit better just because it does look fun and heartfelt. Um, it's going to more locations. Yeah. It's going to go wider. Oh, is it? They, we, Which is a surprise we from Focus. did not have an issue booking it most places, so that's been really mm-hmm. great. They went kind of limited on All My Life. They, I was surprised by the... Um, limited with Regal closed? Yeah. It's very limited. Right. I thought we would get a few more spots because Regal is closed, but they didn't. That surprises me. I was expecting Focus to not have as many locations as right. All My Life would, so I think, that changes things mm-hmm. for how I see this weekend going. Yeah. No, it, it, it'll... I. They're trying a new approach, which is awesome. The last uh, three releases from them, we haven't had any issues getting Prince mm-hmm. come play, let him go. And... Right. And they all did really good. Like, Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I let him go did really good for some of our Western, um, you know, towns. Rocky Mountain towns. Rocky Mountain. Yeah. Towns. It did really good. Um, some of the East Coast stuff didn't do as good with it, but it was still decent across the board. Okay. Um, come play uh burned off a little quicker than um than I would say let him go did yeah. but where it did hold it's still holding strong like I'm still holding come play in a few places mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that one was surprisingly yeah. and I think the PG13 rating on that really helped too I was worried it started a week late cuz it came out the day before Halloween yeah perfectly placed yeah they nailed it with that one that was that was really good let him go did really good in the Rocky Mountain region and um and so i have high hopes for half brothers they kind of, they're kind of on a pretty good streak right now so okay yeah. good deal and focus is doing well and it's not super artsy stuff it's like right. like films in the public domain where you have a kevin costner or a pg-13 horror yeah. or a movie that relates to uh people with uh step families and divorce and half siblings and all those things which are very relatable yeah it's yeah. not uh, a girl in victorian england that doesn't know what to do i mean that's not relatable to regular the people. snotty no. period pieces yeah yeah <laughs> yeah the upturned nose <laughs> true yeah. art true art true cinema kira nightingly somewhere yeah. <laughs> best costume pe- movies <laughs> bill nighy is always in those movies just somewhere once. <laughs> in the background <laughs> He'll make an appearance. Yeah, so um, I I think all my life should do really well. It is from you know Universal's putting it out, and they do have quite a bit of marketing power still. Mm. And um, but I'm kind of worried because they went so limited with it. I think they just know that it's kind of overall a sad movie, and 
Last year they had Last Christmas. Last Christmas. And it didn't do as great, even though it was a Christmas kind of theme movie um, with a well-known actress in it. And what's her face with the dragons in it? Yeah, Khaleesi. Yeah. <laughs> Game of Thrones girl. Yeah, yeah Game of Thrones girl. <laughs> um, Amelia Clark. Ha. There you go. There we go. Nice. And Henry Goulding yep. uh, coming off of his Crazy Rich Asians. Pipe. Pipe. Yeah. So, yeah, that should have done better than it did, but I think it's sad. I think it was kind of had a sad ending or not the happily ever after ending. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Because I don't know. Oh, I, I was no, going to say. I have, I have, I have Kyle, do you You're know? You're looking at us. We live together. You would have <laughs> yeah. known if I'd seen it. <laughs> Look at, looking at us for answers. Well, We're maybe like, somebody guys? told you. You guys? You guys? I'm pretty sure that. Yeah, I had lots of long conversations yeah. with people about last Christmas. Okay, anyways. <laughs> so they're probably going off that as a comp. A probably. Little bit. That seems about right. Yeah. Same December opening. Same story, just no people. I mean, no no stars in it. So that's the yeah. that's the difference between these and how they're going to open. A little bit. Um. So two new films though this week, which was awesome. Yeah, definitely. And then next week we've got uh, Wild Mountain Time from Bleecker Street, which is new. And I think that's kind of it how, for how huge wide, wide stuff i was gonna say how wide is that one going to be they're go- they, they're taking all my all my dates so pretty wide okay. um with they're the, not looking for vpf locations but with the closures you'd expect five to 500 to a thousand yeah. that it would show possibly yeah. um but it's going pvod stay and date right. so the terms are a little bit better on it mm-hmm. um we watched a screener of it i don't think we talked about it because we skipped <sighs> Ken thought it was boring. I liked it. Emily Blunt was great in it. Yeah. And um, I enjoyed Jamie Dornham. And it was nice to see him in a different role. Because the only other thing I've ever seen him in is Fifty Shades of Grey. So. Right. And then him and Robin Hood didn't work. So I never watched that one. Yeah, exactly. What would you think of the accents? Because after the trailer premiered, I remember hearing a lot of people being really critical about the accents. Like even people I- from that whatever area that's supposed yeah. to be they're like these accents are terrible yeah. cody I'm, go ahead you first i'm not i didn't mind the accents at all but i'm not an accent snob right so. ne- neither am i i wouldn't have had a clue right. but i w- remember reading that after the trailer and i was like oh had no it, idea it but wasn't okay. blatantly bad to me sure yeah. because mm-hmm. emily blunt is english so it's not like and Jamie Dornham, I think, is I think English as well. He's English or Irish. Yeah. So it's yeah. not like they don't already kind of have an accent. It's not a far stretch for them. They're not as bad as, you know, some American trying to fake it. Right. Yeah. They were horrifying. They were not. <laughs> horrifying. They had Christopher, yes. Christopher Walken. Okay. He was Every, not great. Everyone in the movie had a different accent. Oh, yeah. I love that I asked this question. Everyone. Yes. I, 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 I tried to ignore it. Everyone no. in the movie had a different accent. The mother, Emily Blunt, Jimmy Dornan, Christopher Walken. I don't know where he was. Yeah. He was in outer space. Okay. I'll admit his everybody, was not great. Everybody had a different accent. Space. Yeah. If you go to a place that has accents, everybody sounds exactly the same. That's why they're called accents. They don't have like, oh, this guy on this street talks this way and this street talks a different way. No, everybody from New York has a New York accent. Everybody from Boston has a Boston accent. Everybody from this tiny village would sound exactly the same. <laughs> but Christopher Walken sounded like he was chewing gum and trying to not sound like Christopher Walken. Okay. You, you take him out of the mix. I kind of thought they all sounded the same. I didn't think they were vastly different. They sounded like they all had their own accents. <laughs> I love that I asked that question. It was an unintentional <laughs> comedy as far as the accents go. The movie wasn't as funny as I thought it was going to be. I it was hilarious it, because I thought of the it accents. was going to be. <laughs> Stop it. I thought but not it was because of the be jokes. more fun. It was way more dramatic um, than, I, than I think the trailer lends itself to be. It lends it to be one of those dramas that tries to act like purposely goofy. Yeah. But it, but clearly by the sounds of it, you're making it so that way it's actually like a much more of a drama and less on the goofy side. Right. Yeah. The only yeah. pleasant surprise was John Hamm was in it. Yeah. And thank God he didn't try to have an accent. He did not. He was <laughs> definitely an American. I do remember like watching the trailer and being like, why is he seem the only one that's calm right now in this Because trailer? he doesn't have to pretend to have an accent. Yeah. Everybody else is upset. Just be John Hamm. Oh, yeah, sure. No problem. They had to listen yeah. to 
speeches from people taped in pubs and they're like, I cannot sound like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, yeah, I'm very glad I got to ask that question. <laughs> I was very curious. Well, it was it was good nonetheless. So we have... I enjoyed it, but I don't think Ken was the audience. We have it. that movie on the 11th. The 18th, what do we have? News of the World, right? No. No? F- uh, Fatale? Yeah, from Lionsgate. From Lionsgate. Is it, is it not Fatale? It has to be Fatale. I'm pretty sure it's Fatale. I'm going to say Fatale. It's, I mean, that's fine, but it's, it's not confused. Is it Hillary audience. Swing playing an Italian? Because I cannot do that after Wild Mountain Time. <laughs> I think a trailer is supposed to be dropping today or Friday. I hope so. I think so. we're about to get a trailer soon. But... Is she going to do the Brad Pitt version of Italian? Buongiorno. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> Speak the fourth most Italian. Uh, I don't know what to make of that Fatal movie anyway, because... I don't know what it is. I think it's like a... Espion- not an espionage movie, but like it, there's she... sex and there's tension, you know? It's, it's just like one of those... There's sex, but there's secrets behind everyone oh, no. and involved, and that's what I'm getting out of like what little I've heard about this movie. Huh. So, well, it's from Lionsgate, so a trailer I think would really help. <laughs> it's it, it will help tremendously because my description is probably not accurate. <laughs> what it's like a comedy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just the com- it's a it's a kids film. It's yeah. not even close to what I heard. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then at Christmas which um, is going to be awesome this year. We've got three. Kyle, do the air horns. Three new releases. Three new wide, large budget releases. Yep. So we've got Wonder Woman, Mm -hmm. 1984. Mm -hmm. Finally going for sure Christmas. It is going day and day with streaming, but I don't think that we talked about that. I don't think that's going to hurt Wonder Woman as much as um, other films might be have hurt by that. So. That's really exciting. That's going to be huge. And, and then, we've got advanced tickets on sale yep. starting yesterday, December 12th. Right. Yep. December 2nd. Excuse me. So advanced tickets for Wonder Woman 1984 can go, could have gone on sale uh, December 2nd. So you can put them up now. Um, we have gotten all of our dates confirmed. And so, right. yeah, we're ready to go on that one. Uh, the second film is News of the World with Tom Hanks from Universal. Tickets can go on sale for that on 12-16. So, so coming up. the universal schedule where they don't give you as much time, but right. Wonder Woman feels like it's way out there. Yeah. Wonder Woman feels like, I mean, if you put your tickets on now, it might be a little premature, but you know, if you have competitors in your area, you obviously want to be the one that, that gets it up first. We did talk about this though. And if you are going to have advanced tickets, make sure your point of sale and your credit card systems right. are easily able to process refunds yes you never know what's going to happen in your area whether it's covid closures which are the most common thing right now or anything else it could be something right. as simple as a projector down i don't think in a small location i don't think the the film's going to move i no. don't think that's going to be an issue but we have had some mandatory closures befall some of our clients and you know we even had a couple of them have to close right before crudes and that was pretty devastating so yeah And having to refund people when you can't be open is just awful. So I would really weigh how early in advance, if you don't have a lot of competitors around, I might not put advance tickets up too too quickly to be purchased because if something changes between now and Christmas, then we're going to have, you know, a lot of refunds on your hand and you don't want to, you don't want to be doing that. Yeah. Um, Hopefully it doesn't come to that, but. Right, because we gotta, we do gotta watch that second week in December, may be an issue for a lot of people because that that's coming a couple weeks after the Thanksgiving. If you see a big spike in your area from of COVID cases, you know you might get shut down when you weren't really getting planned on it. So, yeah, I, I, that might be worst case scenario though. Hopefully, it's not right. to where it becomes that because these three big releases I think are going to be right. very helpful. Just be cautious. People. Yeah, it's all we're saying. Get your ducks in a row. Do the due diligence, buy tickets, make sure they get refunded. And... Right, because we finally have movies now that people actually want to buy advanced tickets for. So yeah. this is becoming an issue now. And we saw it a little bit with Crudes. We did have clients, like I said, that got shut down and had to refund, you know, quite a bit of money and tickets that we had it a lot in a March bunner. where people had to refund tickets for right. that day's shows and weren't familiar with the process of, you know, one ticket takes 
three minutes for your staff to refund, how long does 100 tickets take to refund? Yeah. It could be a substantial amount of workforce that has to go into that. Yep. And then the third film is Monster Hunter with Mila Jovovich from Sony. So, and is, they moved, they they bumped that up. That was a December 30th release originally. Yep. And they bumped it up to the 25th. So great, a Friday release. We don't really need that midweek stuff <laughs> going on right now. Especially in these times. Like, yeah. it, it doesn't matter. Because <laughs> a lot of locations aren't even open midweek anymore. Yeah. And, you know, Wednesdays and Thursdays, are, or Tuesdays, Wednesdays especially, are... Our, a lot of locations are shut down. So you want those weekend numbers. I'm oh, just so glad that we have three Friday openings and Christmas is on a Friday this year. So it's going to be, there's not early shows on a lot of these. I don't think there's a, none that we know of. Yeah. Yeah. Wonder I Woman believe, definitely doesn't have them. And yeah. I and I know news of the Mo- world monster, doesn't. monster hunter doesn't have one. I'm not sure about news of the world, but I don't think they're going to have early shows because it's Christmas Eve and most places are closed on Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. Most, most theaters. So you get, I think it's scheduling wise. This is going to be really, really easy for this. Yeah. If you have three screens or more, you have three new hundred million dollar movies coming in yeah. on Christmas day, which is one of our biggest days of the year to, without a film being film specific. Like Great. that's one of the biggest days of the year for theaters without knowing exactly what's coming out. So it's awesome. Yeah. So, and I'm uh, for my clients, I'm booked for all three already. Everybody's good to go. They can start promoting. Whew, good. Yeah. But we should also say that we have been hearing people are running into challenges, getting promotional materials because like with Wonder Woman, this was supposed to come out in summer. And so all of the deals where you have, you know, popcorn buckets and cups and all of the toys and the manufacturing stuff was all set to happen earlier in the year. And now there's just not anything available right now. So um, get it, sourcing that stuff that you normally would source it for promotional materials is going to be challenging for, for all three films because we just didn't know if they were going to go and... And it really, this pushing product back has really screwed up the manufacturing end of the promotional materials. Not to mention just the regular stuff. I mean, we've talked about how we haven't even had trailers for some films that are coming out. (sighs) Right. But trailers have been hard to get, but you're not going to get, you know, the Wonder Woman one sheet package where you get a dozen one sheets like you used to for large complexes. And you're really going to have to fight for this stuff and get on it right away. And that's where Silver Screen Insider really helps. So if you're listening to this and you have an account, an Insider account with SSI, you can use all of those downloadable high-resolution graphics, and you're going to have to slap on some promotions yourself. Make stickers. Make make your own posters. Do the things you normally would do and get creative. We've got plenty of time, and we have the high-resolution graphics for you to use, and those are approved for you to use in your promotions. So Yeah, yeah so you may not necessarily need to start selling tickets yet, but you can at least start promoting, letting people know a theater is yeah. open, and it will have these three right. great titles. You can make flyers. Like you said, you can make... You can get, um, if you're a small location and you don't have branded popcorn bags and stuff, you could probably get stickers to throw on regular bags. You could do up nice promotions where you have, you know, maybe you do something special and get caramel corn this year and put it in a bag and then put a Wonder Woman sticker on it or something. Just come up with some interesting marketing ideas to use the graphics. You're going to have to kind of DIY this a little bit. I was just thinking that too, actually. (laughs) Do it or else. Do it or else. I mean, it's Christmas. Everyone's doing crafts anyway. Might as well, you know, do it for your theater too. Yeah. (laughs) So um, get on that and log into your SSI account. Go to the movie detail page. So go to Wonder Woman, Monster. Monster Hunter or News of the World and in the graphic section go ahead and download any of those for your promotional materials. And yeah. along with all the outside stuff, Cody's talking about doing things to your concessions uh, inside, but get these things up. Even if you don't have one sheets, it might be something as simple as a handbill that goes with every ticket to right. tell people these are upcoming. This yep. is the date. You have to, if someone's willing to come into the theater for what we have on screen now, They'd be yeah. willing to come in for one of these three. Totally. Yep. And they're going to bring somebody because they felt safe in your cinema safe theater. Right. And I know that Warner Brothers especially has been um, really wanting to know if the theaters are doing the cinema safe protocols. So if you've not implemented them or signed up for that program, please do so. It just, it really helps. Um, it's not mandatory to get Wonder Woman by any means, but um, I think it's just 
good overall and it definitely is something to promote along with the movies upcoming. So the probably, cinema safe program, you yeah. can go check that out on silverscreeninsider.com. That's the NATO approved protocol program for theaters. Yeah. I think uh, it'll save you a phone call or a very lengthy survey. You'll have to fill out from Warner brothers. <laughs> if, yeah. you, if you take care of the cinema safe thing now. Yep. I lied and said all my clients were doing it. So if they're not doing it, they need to sign up. But you did tell your clients later, like you should sign this up. <laughs> I so will. we can get our story straight. <laughs> yes, I'm going to have to have that. Totally, that's st- what you did. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to have that conversation. All right. Now that we're at Christmas, what do we have beyond that that we're well, looking at? There has been a couple of release schedule changes that we should uh, note. Uh, Nomadland has sort of been on set. Um, Searchlight doesn't know what they want what they're what they're going to do with this they know that they have to have a um, new york la premiere for oscars but they don't know uh, what the plan is going to be after that so it's it's kind of been pushed back to january maybe even february for a major wide release on it depending upon if they can get this new york la thing worked out and then roadside has a pinocchio movie um also on christmas is that from roadside or is it now gravitas ventures I thought it was grab, or am I thinking of a different movie? Maybe it might I don't be know. Side. Well, we'll I'll double check that right now. Actually, double check that. Um, <laughs> I might and be. We'll find out. I'm pretty sure it was Roadside. Okay. Um, but it is a English version of an Italian film, I think. Yeah. So it's either dubbed or subtitled. Yeah, I don't think it. It's. It was totally made for American audiences. It's going to be very upscale, very artsy. Pinocchio and so um that's on the on there I'm not really targeting it for my clients I think between the three film the three big releases that's plenty and with capacity issues I'm not looking to bring in a lot of stuff at this time no nope. I'm keeping your classics on screen anything else that's still performing well and then the 355 that female uh spy movie moved from january of 2021 to january of 2022 so it moved back a year i'm surprised it moved back a whole year it looked like the film was completed we had a trailer and everything for it i just I think universal's got so much on their plate with these right. minor titles upcoming and then they have to start planning for fast and furious and jurassic and yeah. they've got a lot of stuff in the pipeline and they've got to spread these out i mean this is out. they're hopeful that this is going to be you know a hundred million dollar movie when it does come out well it's a january title so i don't think they're hopeful for a hundred million but they they couldn't push it back i mean there's just no other real good weekends anymore for 2021 because everything else got pushed back into the so if they're targeting january specifically i see why they had to go a whole year back but I think they probably could have had it on the 15th. They probably could have kept it this year, but... They then, must think um, it's a franchise starter. Maybe. Then My Brother's Keeper moved from the January 22nd, 2021 to February 5th, 2021. So just moved back a couple weeks. And that's kind of it for news. Uh, for we, release date For change. release date <laughs> changes, sorry. For news, all we have is... Godzilla vs. Khan wants a theatrical release, but may go to HBO Max. So we're probably waiting to see how this Wonder Woman day and date PVOD thing, theatrical HBO Max does. And then Godzilla vs. Khan might be another film that they experiment with that. Yeah, if you're getting ready to sign up for HBO Max or gift it to someone, please wait until January. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Because those numbers from now until Christmas Day are going to tell them what theaters mean to their potential for grossing yeah if wonder woman puts up a huge number and hbo max gets you know a million subscribers out of this that's not a big as big of a number as they need i hope i hope it's not i hope it's not i mean it's it's got to be something massive it's got to be a huge draw for them torn you know because you want it to be successful in any model so that they keep putting movies in theaters, but you don't want it to be so successful that it pulls the product from the theaters to the yeah. streaming. So you don't want it to completely bomb in streaming because they've got to have that risk reassurance that if I put in a theater under these you know, pandemic conditions, I can still make a little bit more. There's still some relief on the streaming end. 
but you don't want it to be so good that that like Disney, they're like, we're only going to go streaming in the future. Yeah, so. we need it to be sustainable for now, but yeah. give the theaters lots of hope for what's upcoming. And then I think that's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I there think wasn't we're all very, done. There wasn't very much happening there wasn't. these two weeks. But. We're just super excited for Crudes, and we're really looking forward to Christmas now. We've got some movies. They're booked. You can start advertising them. December actually has movies to end this year, so hopefully everything goes smoothly. So we're about to end the show, and, you know, because we didn't have a lot of news or anything to go over this week. It was pretty simple, just a quick, easy podcast. And then my... My watch just buzzed me and we got some huge breaking news during the oh, middle no. of our podcast. I've gotten multiple calls. Turns out Warner Brothers decided to make a big announcement. So wah, like wah, Wonder Woman wah. 2 and 3 are coming out at the same time? I, was, wah, I wish. Wah. I wish. No. They're redoing Lord of the Rings? Wah, wah, wah. Is it a Harry Potter? They recasted somebody else? A diverse Harry Potter is what I was going to go yeah. with. They got rid it's of J.K. A, Rowling and a, we're going to get a good screenwriter in it's there. A, it's a fem- all-female diverse cast yeah. for J. Harry Rowling Potter. had a change of heart. Yeah. No, none of that. It. I don't know. I, I don't even know what to think about this announcement, guys. I'm just shocked and kind of blown away. But here goes. Warner Brothers has just put out a press release announcing that their whole 2021 slate is going to be simultaneous HBO Max releases wah, wah, and theatrical. Wow. <laughs> their whole year slate. Mm-hmm. That includes Suicide Squad, the remake with James Gunn is doing. Dune. Uh, Space Jam with LeBron James. Godzilla versus Kong yeah. in the Heights. I'll help you out, Cody. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm just... Those are going to be big movies. I This is so premature. We've not even seen how Wonder Woman's going to do at Christmas under this yeah. model. And yet they're they're going to, you know, take it the whole next year. Like, guys, this is crazy. What yeah. What is happening? And Tenant destroyed overseas. Like, yeah. you're just taking well, away that... Well, this announcement is for the domestic market. I don't think this applies to the international market because I'm not sure that they have deals for HBO Max internationally in all markets. Uh, yeah, they Yet. might still be working yeah. on that. So this, I think, predominantly applies to just the domestic U.S. market. Maybe um, U.S. and Canada. Actually, according to Deadline, it is saying that they are going to do this um, type of release theatrically in the U.S. and international territories. Yeah. might not be all of them, but... Right. It is looking like it's, it's playing for that so to be globally. So far, it's globally, but they're not rolled out, I don't think. I know I know that's why Disney didn't do Disney Plus in a lot with some of the Mulans because um they're not and with Soul because they're not in all markets. Oh, well this is deflating beyond Tragic. deflating news. Yeah. We were going to have a week of, you know, nothing to really report know, on. And we earlier so, we were talking about the Godzilla we news. We're so excited at the first part of the podcast. <sighs> it always happens. On a Thursday. I it's Every surprisingly time. how early in the day we're getting this news. At um, least it at least it wasn't last second news. That right. is true. I mean, no, we already knew Wonder oh, Woman was geez. gone. They could yeah. have waited. They could have waited till after Wonder Woman did so good and they'd be like, oh, this was such a success. We're going to extend this model. No, this is so preemptive on this announcement. They could have waited till March yeah. to when make a decision. When was their next movie? They could have yeah. waited. Yeah, they could have waited indefinitely to make a decision. Right. Make it picture by picture. Yeah. See they what works. Put some caveats in there. Do something. Not do a blanket policy change for the whole next release year under you know circumstances we don't know what's going to happen warner brothers is known for theatrical release franchise films yeah (laughs) that's what they do but now you're going to watch lord of the rings on your phone get out of here i I don't know that's such a shame (laughs) it just so i have some initial thoughts about this after the shock has worn off a little bit There's just some spitballing, some things that have coming to mind. Um, It sucks. Yeah, besides that. (laughs) One, it sucks. (laughs) Obviously, they looked at the 2021 schedule and felt that the pandemic movie going experience that we're experiencing now is going to extend all next year. 
And it kind of makes sense because while we do are going to get a vaccine, I don't know when it's going to be mass produced for, for the whole market. We might be looking at towards the end of next year yeah. for it. So, cause I think it's something like six months and the first round goes out to all the healthcare workers and then you're going to roll out after that. So you are looking at quite a bit of time before you get a vaccine, a va- vaccine, a vaccine on the market mm-hmm. and have it be widespread. Um, so I'm a little deflated that they are, the analysts are assuming that this pandemic movie going experience is going to extend a lot through next year. I definitely think it was going to extend through the first part of next year for sure. But I was yeah. hoping by March we would see some easing of restrictions and some, and some uptick in the movie going. Um, I think that they're very premature. A lot can change in a year. And this is just such a blanket, throw it out, boom, big, you know, like way to throw a grenade into everything Mm -hmm. cluster of a mess. And, um, and I'm not sure why, like they didn't like can said, wait till after wonder woman and use the success for that. Why, why couldn't they just say a picture by picture basis? Cause there are a few pictures that we mentioned like suicide squad and Dune that where you're going to want a small theatrical window, like a small exclusive window, you know, at least two to three weeks. I mean, they're going to want to do what universal's doing because universal's run the numbers and they know they make all their money in the first couple of weeks. And then, it makes it even that much more valuable when it goes to streaming. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure why Warner's isn't going to do that on on these or they're just plowing ahead with this one Wonder Woman model that they're going with now. So I think that that could maybe change. And I'm sure there's going to be adjusting as we go on. Um, but I just... I think it's kind of crazy and it, and it's going to make us question a lot of things. Like we really are going to have a big talks about terms, you know, like are you, wonder woman terms are sort of reasonable, a little high for going day and day. I'd like to see them 5% lower and moving forward. That's definitely going to be an issue. Um, is that we're going to have to make sure that we have lower terms because we are not getting an exclusive theatrical model on it there's no exclusivity therefore you don't get the bigger terms does this going to affect um the amount of prints available in the market we are coming off vpfs we this next year was going to be a whole new year where vpfs weren't going to be involved are they going to still limit print counts i mean they're doing that right now like universal limited all uh, my life print counts and didn't go very wide even though regal's not open they still limited it so I think that's got to be addressed. Unfortunately, I don't think anything's going to change with that. But maybe that's where allies in the creative community can can help out saying, no, we want certain print counts available because it really doesn't cost that much extra to make more DCPs. And if it is costing that much extra, we need to have a conversation with Deluxe and go to them and say, what's going on? Why are we getting charged so much? Because that's interfering with our model. So terms, amount of prints in the market. And then, you know, what does this mean for marketing and promotion? And how is this going to be marketed? Is this, are the studios going to start marketing for their, for their um, streaming services? Or are they even going to market theatrical? And I think as theater owners and managers moving forward, you know, this is going to be the reality. I, they, Warner, this is not going to end with Warner's. I'm pretty sure Disney's probably going to move to something similar. Oh, yeah. Universal's already kind of uh, gone out there and said that this is their model. Well, they'll give, you know, s- some windowing, which all of a sudden now Universal looks like the better hero here. Yeah. <laughs> Disney's, I never thought that yeah. we would be, we'd see Warner's fall from grace. <laughs> Disney but. doing this will be announced next week. Disney um, already yeah. pulled their two biggest titles of the year to yeah. streaming only. Yeah. So I with Disney, I'm worried that they're not going to do day and date, that they're just going to go streaming only from now yeah. on. That, that's the big fear we have with Disney. Yeah. And because they actually have the platform that HBO Max is trying to create. Yeah. And so as, you know, owners and managers moving forward, you don't ha- you're not going to have exclusive content anymore. You should just 
wrap your head around that now. That has got to be a reality that we all come to terms with and to grips with and be honest with ourselves that we will are not going to have exclusive content. And if we do, we're not going to have it for very long. And it's not going to be A-plus content, most likely. Or it will be only the A-plus content that we get exclusive. I meant the independent films that we have been showing to fill in gaps is going to be our other... Well, we'll get to that. But the reality is the A-plus content, we'd be lucky to have short theatrical windows. And by short, I mean a week to to two or three weeks. I mean, that's best case scenario now moving forward. And it's pretty doable, I would say. I mean, I think that could be... I mean, is it great for theaters? No, but I think yeah. it's, you know, that fine balance to where theaters and streaming can coexist. I think it, it, we're going to have to learn. It's going to, yeah. we're going to coexist. I think it's always kind of been there. Movie going was on the decline. Um, the, the avid movie goer was on the decline. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we, the, the writing has been there on the wall. It just is coming fast and furious on top of us now. Yeah. So you're not going to have exclusive content. And if you do, you're only going to have it for a couple of weeks. We got to get into that reality mm-hmm. that that's your, your window. The other thing is the studios are not going to be marketing exclusively to theaters anymore. And so you need to, as a business owner, you're going to have to market your venue and you're going to have to market this product and you're going to have to spend money on promotions and marketing where you never had to before. I mean, there's a lot of theater owners, and I'm sorry, there are business owners that don't know how to market because they've never had to. Yeah. And that is going to have to change moving forward. And that's a that's probably the biggest, most expensive change, I think, on the horizon for theaters. The most disruptive change is because you just don't have that experience and that knowledge in your wheelhouse right now because you've never had to. Yeah, exactly. They've only had to promote movies, and then people show up to whatever venue right. is closest by to them. Now you know, you're not going to have that exclusivity anymore. So you have to, you know, like you were saying, improvise and maybe improve your theater as a whole. So that way it looks like a much nicer place than what you already have and find other tricks to market that. And I think that your theater will become less about the movies and more about the venue. And if that's the case, what are the, why do people go? What are you, what is going to get them to not stream it for free? on their on their TVs. It's going to be luxury seating and food and beverage and that's going to be the reality of the, you're not you're no longer going to be able to get by with old traditional seats and popcorn and sodas anymore. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, I think it's yeah. kind of good to, you know, change the perception of theaters anyway, but it just goes back to, you know, not having the big movies to be so exclusive i mean hopefully after 2021 when everything's back to normal that changes to where they do at least do that three week window right so you do have that exclusivity there but i don't think you're ever going back though yeah you know this this announcement was just for 2021 but i you get through this year you're never i mean i don't think we're ever going back to the old model no of you're, you're just be lucky if we get short windows now and it's just which is cr- doable like it's you just can make crazy, that work though in a year the converse in less than a year because of this pandemic the conversation went from do we even talk about windowing and fighting windowing to now do we are we even going to have a window like yeah yeah were we expected to be cut to from 90 to 45 days or to 30 days yeah and now it's I remember, instantaneous i remember mm. a few podcasts ago i was talking about best key scenario was 30 day windows <laughs> where you had you made all your money in the first three weeks and then you had like a, a week or two cushion before it went to streaming which they want those first three weeks anyway yeah but now you don't get the week or two it's just i mean man to see that deteriorate so much and you know if if this pandemic doesn't ease up and there's not the closures and stuff that theaters can't really fight back. And, and you can only really fight back if you have options, you can only tell Warner brothers, I'm not going to play that product if it's day and date because I have other stuff to play. Well, if all the studios do this, we're, which they probably will now. I mean, oh yeah, every one of them has a streaming service. The top three do, yeah. you know, Disney has Disney plus Warner's has HBO max and universal has Peacock. And you know, after this happened with you know hbo max and warner bros like universal might be rethinking what deals they made already 
they want to make peacock big they could but i i think they have the i i think they have enough um you know numbers and analysts to know that they that a three-week window on certain on certain films is where they make their money which again makes them look like the hero (laughs) yeah it makes them look smart yeah but if it's crazy if you work at a theater own a theater lease your building to a theater yeah book movies for that theater sell concessions to that theater this is the biggest news we've had in the last five years right. this is this is as big and as this is worse than what universal egregious as it gets. this yeah. isn't yeah. this isn't even the same oh, yeah. sport nope. this is a completely different thing we're dealing with here yeah this is a film company saying no theaters are not important to us anymore right. this is beyond what we could have imagined they're calculating even, even that this ago. is the new norm that not only is this not pandemic model but this is this is going to be the model moving forward that's what's so shocking to me is that yeah they're not thinking outside of their walls i don't think like i truly believe that people do still want to go to theaters they want to go out because they want to see you know that epic cool looking movie like on a big on a big screen make an event out of it yeah i it and granted it's not going to be where they're going every week no but you know, right. one week they're going to be watching something on stream, and the next week they're going to say, "You know what? Let's go out to a theater. Let's make a night out of it." Yeah, like that's going to co- that we we as a community and the outside world know like that's what people are thinking. But yep. in in their offices and their corporate businesses, I really yeah. think that they're not thinking like it's going to go back to normal, no. and that scares me. You know, because they should listen. Ken made such a good point about the executives being in L.A. too and New York. No, I mean they're they're sequestered in these major coastal cities where they look out their windows and they see nothing going on. They see no cars right. moving, they see no traffic, they see theaters closed, they see no grosses coming from the theaters that they are looking at. But we had the best weekend last weekend that we've had since March. Yeah. We had theaters that put up numbers comparable to major Disney releases in their theaters that we had yep. for crudes. Really good, strong releases for little at towns. Limited capacities. Little towns, limited yep. capacities. Yeah. We had, yep. we had some signs of things looking right. I mean, we were surprised by little town theaters, independent locations, doing thousands of dollars in business with limited capacities. It's just doing numbers that yeah. were beyond a normal weekend in a normal year, mm-hmm. and we were ready to embrace that with Warner Brothers and Universal right. and Sony and Paramount and go through I this. I just think that they saw that they got all their Wonder Woman dates and they're like, we could do this for the rest of the year. And no, you got Wonder Woman dates because all we've had up until this point is crudes. Yeah. So yeah, we had to take a shot at it. Did I like that it was, was day and date with HBO Max? No, no, I didn't like it at all. And if mm-hmm. I could have stood on my pedestal and said, told my clients, let's not play this, let's take a stand, I would have. But you couldn't, we couldn't do it, you know? The, we needed something. Yeah, theaters were totally they were willing to, to make it work. I mean, <sighs> between Talk- Tenet and Wonder Woman, and now they get this news, that's a yeah. slap in the face easily. Yeah. And I if- felt so bent over a barrel over it, but you had to take it. If you're yeah. somebody that advocates for theaters this is unacceptable yeah and there needs to be something brought up nationally to all these film companies to say this will not stand right and this is probably oh you go ken today this this is beyond unacceptable because this will destroy the industry that you are there to represent yeah it totally undervalues all the films they just they lose their value if they go day and day streaming they do all the films, all the theaters, yeah. all the film companies. Yeah. This... All the productions. Like You don't think that all those juicy back-end deals to get the best actors and the best directors aren't going to have an issue if they don't get a cut of theatrical back-end anymore? Welcome to back to actor How quoting you... where you're paying $50 <laughs> yeah. million dollars for Tom Cruise yeah. yeah, up front before he even starts. Welcome right. back to that. Welcome back to signing up for a box office bomb. Yep. Versus paying somebody based on performance, which is how theaters and film companies get paid. <laughs> no, and, and you and if you do advocate for you know movie theaters and cinemas, now is a good time to promote save your cinema. 
Yeah. We need, you guys need to really make sure that, you know, everyone is understanding that like theaters are open. Theaters are trying to thrive, but they need help. And clearly they're not getting it from these studios and they need help from the public. So make sure you voice about that uh, program that's happening and get your voice out. So that way others will do the same. Cause I do think there will be others that can follow. Oh yeah. I, I, this, I mean, this was huge. Warner's was a big player. It yeah. was one, you know, Disney's not made an announcement like this. It was one thing for Universal to do it, but if we had Warner's on our side, you could fight the Universal deal. Disney never had that much product, so it wasn't as big. I mean, the things they had were huge, but they had always said that they were going to have some theatrical. So, yeah. uh, man, going into this next year it looked like we were going to have just an issue with universal and we were looking at shortened windows now warner's has really stepped up and just yeah now we're thanking universal and that certainly doesn't feel no. good oh no we're not doing that yet i'm not doing that i'm just <laughs> i'm not, just saying i'm not, not hating on them as much as i <laughs> we've got was. somebody else to worry about right now yeah <laughs> Don't. man and i thought warner's was really on our side i just feel like I feel like that was a decision, an AT and T corporate decision. That came. That's a decision coming from the way higher up. It could. That have is been. not a film studio decision. That's no. You, there's, there's. I mean, I hope everybody yeah. at Warner Brothers has built their legacy on whether it was in booking films or film production, yeah. or I mean, they're all involved with the film industry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody that works there works there to a certain degree because they love film. Yeah. Like everybody that's involved with theaters and right. has has an affinity for films in some way. To take that out of theaters, this is made at some corporate level with, you know, people um bloodletting and <laughs> yeah. no, it's just it's true. Feasting it's on just... children and souls. <laughs> yeah. This is one of those corporate boardrooms where no woman has ever been after allowed. These guys. <laughs> no, seriously, this is this is what happens when you have a film studio in the business of making movies get bought by a phone company. <laughs> get bought by the telephone company. It is just awful decisions being made. Mm-hmm. Just heartless. <sighs> Cold, corporate, top down. And hope awful. and hopefully at best like this is just temporary. This is hopefully they stick to their word and it's only for 2021. And at least we could go back to some sort of exclusive theatrical window, even if it's those three weeks or 30 days or whatever we've been hoping for. We don't know right now, but that's just the best hope that we can give you. But otherwise just get used to a new normal. Yeah. I, I think at this point, if you're closed, if you're thinking about reopening, I, you need to really, do a business plan. Rethink about your business under these new conditions. If you don't have exclusive theatrical, if your grosses are not going to be what they were in the last several years, if you take your business and cut it by half, is it viable? I mean, now is a great time as we head into the holidays to really take a, a, a long, hard look at, at it and and try to be as conservative as you can about the prospects of what the next year is going to be and assume that all the other companies are going to go with this and they can will. you survive under this new model yeah. and and what is that what does that mean and you know cuz it's not just what happens with this it's how does this reverberate can you afford your rent can you afford your lease can you you know what are are there new um, points you need to negotiate with your with your vendors and stuff? I mean, there's just so many things to take into account. We can't. We've always thought this was just temporary, but this might not be temporary anymore. This might be what it is, you know. And I hope that this isn't the case because I know there's a lot of people that want to go to movies out there, and that yeah, we oh, yeah. what like what we saw with Crudes. If we could have two or three movies do what Crudes did last weekend, we would be back to being close to what we were before even under pandemic circumstances. And even if, you know, people don't go out to see one movie, like there's data that just shows that a movie that was in theaters and then goes to streaming, like instantly gets recognized. Like I can't yeah. tell you how many weeks I, I watch Netflix that I go into Netflix. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a new movie that I know came from theaters first and then appeared 
on streaming yeah. and it's in like the top 10 most watched because people recognize the name and they got interested. Not only that, but they can promote it that way too. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. And they have that whole section like on prime where you can get the ex the in theater movies, you yeah. know, at a higher price. And it's just, they need, I, I can't stress enough that, that, they still need theaters and they need the theatrical model. They want so badly to use theaters to promote mm -hmm. their stuff, but they don't want to give us a break. Like, no, we need to figure out something that's mutually beneficial. You can't use yeah. all the benefits you get from a theater, from having your movie in a theater, from having it be legitimized by the theatrical experience so that it streams better on your streaming platform. So you get more clicks and mm -hmm. you can sell more ads and do what you need to do on that platform you cannot get all the legitimacy of the theatrical without giving us something. And, and that's so what's much money have to can change. be made on both. Yeah. Like, yeah. why do you only want to be on streaming? You can make so much money by going both ways. It will cost you money, but think right. about how much money it could make you. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a disheartening day for people like us that are involved in the, the film industry. We're not here to, you know, ruin, ruin your weekend or just deliver you bad news. No. You know, that's the website is still going to be here for all the upcoming film news and information with right. Kyle's got this article up, I think already. And I'm working on now yeah. should be posted. I believe article will be seen first, maybe podcast after we'll see. Yeah. Right. They'll both will be up, but you know, we're here to give you the newest and latest information and we could have walked away from this and been sad, but we are here to commiserate with you. Yeah. This is not a good day, but we can, we're we trying can, to be positive. We're we trying to look at what this yeah. really means. What is this? What is this really? If you dig down over the shock of the announcement, what could this mean? How do we prepare? You know, let's not run away from this. Let's fight it. Let's yeah. fight. Let's figure it out. Let's, Let's get ourselves prepared for this new reality. And how do we do that? Yeah. How can we live in this space with these new restrictions? I mean, yeah. we we did this over a decade ago with the transition to digital. I mean, this is just a new hurdle to jump over. Yeah, it seems like it's 10 miles high, but <laughs> this is something new to deal with. And it's just it's just the the shock of it. It's just such rapid change. That's what I can't get over. It's you know, my dad has been doing this for over 40 years. I've been in this almost 15 years. And this change in this last year has been so rapid and so fundamentally altering uh, what the business was and is. I mean, things had changed a lot in the last couple of years. A lot more emphasis was being put on billing, you know, getting payments in, not getting product till you're paid up. I mean, it was little things that were making it not as fun to do the job anymore, but it wasn't so radical. Like what's happened during this pandemic. Yeah. It just, it is not the same business that he had. And it is not the same business that I thought we were going to have. It is something so completely new that, you know, I don't even know. We just, we got to prepare ourselves for it. Oh yeah. I mean, this affects us just as much as it affects every theater out there. How do we, what do we book? How do we emphasize the bookings? What do we prioritize? What's going to work? When do we do it? Like Before you just had to fill a screen with a movie. Yeah. Because there were a major release and then two films next week and three films the following week and then another right. major release. But now, you know, you're looking seriously at windows and minimums and is this going to make the money and yeah. how long do I keep it for? And you know, is there something else out there? And if there's something else out there, how well is it going to do? What are the minimums? Who do I contact? Like the, the job has just grown so much and, and you're just looking for, and half of it now is just looking for new content and, it's just crazy. And I don't think that on top of all this, I don't think the studios are going to go back to any, you know, 30 day pays. I think you have to get really used to seven day pays and max 14 day pays. But I think it's going to be seven day pays from here on out. We've always encouraged it. We know it's not yeah. possible for certain places, but well, that's because the of it, you know, of scale terms you, where you don't know what it's going to land on nationally it's hard to pay seven days because you don't really know where, what percent to be paying at. But 
you know, if they move to this and they start doing more aggregates, they're going to want seven day pays. It's just, you're going to have to be on it more and you may not get access to product, even if it is on streaming, if you owe money. I mean, it's just that whole aspect is really changed. And, and I know that the salespeople, the studios are just as worried about theater owners because they're looking at it going, well, if you just go streaming, what's my job? Do I have a job? I mean, where are they, you know, what are they supposed to do? This whole industry is built on these relationships and it, this affects everybody. Yeah. A thousand percent. I mean, it, how many Disney action figures are they going to sell without a movie in theaters? Right. Like how much merchandising has Frozen have done for them? Have you seen like any soul stuff? No. You know, like, no. would you buy it if you just saw it on the TV? Yeah. I mean, I don't so, know. Saw it streaming on your phone. Do yeah. Your kid watches it on streaming <laughs> while you're going through the grocery store. Yeah. Do you really want that <laughs> Mulan action figure? Not that I've ever done that before. <laughs> no, of course now, not. <laughs> I don't think you want to spend the money on it. It doesn't seem to have the same impact. Maybe you do. Maybe. Well, would you want to go on a ride for a movie that you saw at home? Probably not. Yeah. Like I mean, there's... I went on Dumbo, the ride, and I saw it at home. I turned out okay. But I get what you mean, though. I, I know. It's <laughs> it's really dark news for today after last weekend where all of our locations saw some light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. And we knew we were going to have these up and down days going through this. We didn't know it would last through the continuation of 2020. No. Um, but, you know, we're, we're here for the duration. Our... <laughs> Our podcast livelihood is based on movies coming out in theaters. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to make this work, darn it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we don't have a sponsorship from a, a pill company <laughs> or, right. just or, sort of look into or some them. sort of man-specific shaver. We don't <laughs> right. have any of those things. Manscaped, if you are listening, like <laughs> feel free. <laughs> Wouldn't hurt. <laughs> oh, geez. Oh. So, yep, that's the news. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll have more thoughts on this as we talk, you know, with with other people, with our clients. We'll ha we'll have develop this. This was literally just breaking news and what our first reactions were to yeah. it. Kyle, get away from the window. Don't yeah. jump. <laughs> yeah. We're on uh, the first floor. It's okay. <laughs> it's not a fart it's like jump. Three, three feet to the <laughs> ground. I'm a bit dramatic, guys. <laughs> <laughs> he would jump into a bush that might hurt. <laughs> Hurt a little. <laughs> Stab you a little bit. <laughs> oh, oh, geez. So, um, well, sorry to end yeah. on that awful note, but you heard it from us first. We are putting it in perspective. Do I just don't want to end on a positive note. This is very premature news announcement. I'm sure this is Warner's gauging everybody's reaction ahead of time. And I'm sure this will change as the year goes on. You know, this isn't set in stone. You haven't signed a a master licensing agreement that changed the rules and restrictions. This isn't new policy for sure going forward. This is just purely an announcement from the top brass at Warner's and we'll see how each film plays out. And if they're not getting their dates or things pick up, then this could all change again. And we'll probably be talking about, about this as we move forward. But oh, so yeah. just know it's not the end of the world. This hasn't been settled but it's not great. And we need to be thinking about if this is the new reality, how do I survive it? How do we make it over this next yeah. hurdle? What, what changes need to be implemented? And the biggest one we foresee is the marketing side of things. Yep. After that, it's creating that experience, experience. that we've been talking about since the beginning of the podcast. Right. But you really have to find a way to set your marketing and venue apart. You're going to have to. It's got to be something more than just a movie theater moving forward. It's got to be a corporate retreat. It's got to be a gamer's paradise for a weekend. It's got to be these other things because it's not just going to be about sitting in a darkened theater, watching a movie, having popcorn and soda anymore. I think that that, that is gone. That is, that is definitely not the victim of this pandemic for sure. On that positive <sighs> note. <laughs> so, yeah, hang in there, guys. <laughs> We'll get through. We'll get through this together. 
Uh, for, for Cody, who will no longer be speaking on this podcast. <laughs> be off in the corner crying <laughs> again if you need all these types of Drinking. news updates or, or need to know what's coming up on the upcoming release check us out at silverscreeninsider.com get a subscription with us um, yep. always here to help out the theaters no matter what news is going on right now and be sure to check out our podcast we're going to be highlighting all this stuff and more uh still week in and week out uh, check us out on silverscreeninsider.com or on other podcast platforms see you next week bye bye